You mentioned Coach Smith, and I would be remiss not to ask you about him. In your retirement press conference that you visited his gravesite sometimes, mm-hmm. and that also, I believe you said, quote, I talked to him every night. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you could just sort of explain that. You know, it's it was something important when I was at Kansas. I mean, I'm coaching at a place where uh, James Naismith coached in Fog Island, who was the Dr. At- Doc Allen, was the father of basketball coaching. He's the one that went to James Naismith and said, I want to coach. And, and Dr. Naismith said, you can't coach basketball. And Doc Allen said, yes, I can. <laughs> and so Coach Smith played for Doc Allen. But Coach Smith, to me, uh, was the epitome of the perfect basketball coach. He was fiercely competitive, but he did things the right way. He never cheated to do anything to get any player, nothing, period, the end. He was, he was perfect. Every day that I coached, I wanted to do some things that he would approve of. It's almost like that I wanted his approval. And after I did it, I wanted him to uh, feel good about it. It's because he had such an influence on me. I'd been a high school coach for five years, but my development as a basketball coach in those 10 years I was with him came in leaps and bounds of just how to treat people and doing things for people without them knowing about it. You know, most people do a favor for somebody and they tell them about it. Sure. Coach Smith would always do things and wouldn't try to get any credit for it. And I loved that part of it. And my feel for the others' programs and the other teams at the University of North Carolina, everything about Roy Williams as a coach uh, was influenced more by Dean Smith than anything. So I... You know, I don't know what I said there. Whatever I said, I know that I, I, I didn't make up any lies, but I would always think, what would Coach Smith want me to do right now? And I think that he would have been proud of the fact that I stopped because he would have felt like, if you don't think you're doing it as well, I understand. Because he was great. I mean, basically, you know, before he passed, he would have time periods where he'd, he'd come in and out. Right. of making, you know, talking to you. And uh, it was his birthday. Uh, and he, uh, I had cake and ice cream in the office for him every day on his birthday from the first year I got there until the end. And his, the last year that he was alive for his birthday, he uh, came up in the office and Linnea brought him up. And uh, he sat there and, you know, didn't say much, but he ate some cake and ate some ice cream. And all of a sudden he got this look on his face and he looked at me and he said, uh, you know, you're doing a great job. And it hit me so hard. But if you're going to think and remember something about somebody, if they say something positive, it's pretty doggone good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was it, that was the way I was with him. And I knew that, that uh, nobody's perfect. Right. And, and Coach Smith wasn't. But uh, he was as close to perfect as any person I've ever seen. And he was as close to perfect on a basketball court of anybody I've ever seen.